Hi, hello everybody. Um, I'm Monty Mumford from Mob76, um, 15 years experience uh, in digital uh, and then probably 20 years um, experience in life before that. So I used to manage betting shops in London, gambling shops. Um, I was a motorcycle dispatch rider for about 15 years driving around London. Uh, worked in the mobile games industry and then went to India in 2008 um, where I became a Bollywood film star and I was in two movies with a fucking stick on moustache for about 40 days um, hitting people and stuff like that. So it's, it's all been quite good fun up to this point and the last time I was in Sofia was about two and a half months ago. We went skiing at Borovets, um, six hour delay and then the plane had to uh, emergency land in Budapest. So I'm pretty pleased to be here anyway, not nervous at all. Um, <laughs> fuck. Um, uh, apps and chat, I suppose that's what I'm going to talk about. Um, applications are everywhere, every platform, we all know about them. But a lot of people that are creating apps or you know, working with them, they're missing a trick really by not having a chat-based element to that game. Uh, or that information, or that video, or music, or shopping. And we all know about all the different chat platforms, WhatsApp, Snapchat, Line. They're all beginning to kind of change and have different ways of kind of keeping their audiences together. Um, um, that's not moving. There you go. So we're all looking in, you know, into a waterfall of what we do and how we're going to do it. Um, one second. I'll just keep looking at the waterfall of this clicker. Okay. So y the audience. Audiences are tricky, right? You know, we all like to talk and we all like to, you know, engage with other human beings. But you know, talking to an audience like I'm trying to talk to you at the moment, it was a lot easier in Bollywood. I can tell you that much. Um, but audiences are tricky. You know, they've got some pretty high expectations of what they want. Uh, they're generally quite fickle. You know, they can move from platform to platform as those platforms increase. And audiences get very, very bored of content. I mean, it's probably the same thing as fickle. Um, you know, but you've got to engage them. And they always want more. You know, there's so many options out there for them to take. Um, you need to give it to them. And obviously, you know, audiences are, are money. That's what keeps the world going round. Um, so, sorry, yes, thanks. Which one is it? No, no. Left and right, but, uh, yes. Okay, and um, you know that ends up in entropy. You know, everything, everything kind of comes to an end in the world. In the end, just like the world will come to an end. Um, so, do, so does your audience. Uh, <laughs> a bit like this speech. Um, so, you know, people that are making money. Massive, massive brands are still losing audiences by, by not having a chat element to their content. I'll tell you a small story about Angry Birds. Um, when I was in the mobile games industry before I went to India, 2006, seven, uh, we were a, a mobile publishing platform before the iPhone was all on Java. And we had a Finnish company that used to come and send us our games for us to publish. And we used to test them and we used to uh, check them for bugs and you know, things like porting across handsets. And the Finnish company was called Rovio Mobile. And they put 50 games for our platform. And every single one of their games were shit. Rubbish, unbelievably terrible and buggy. So we failed the 51st game, which was Angry Birds, which is probably explains why I went to India in the first place. Um, but speaking to the people that I know there, you know, I went to, I went to uh, Finland um, when I came back from India to see Rovio just from a kind of journalistic um, area. And I saw Peter Vastabacker there, you know, he was quite funny, and said that we used to call you the Rovio killer. So I smiled and said, you know, sorry about that, mate. Uh, and then he got the rest of his uh, company to stand up, and after three, one, two, three, they all shouted out, but we are all now fucking billionaires, which wasn't too clever for me. Um, but even so, there's a kind of industry about Angry Birds itself as a brand. Obviously, the way that it's moved into um, franchi franchises and drinks and theme parks. I speak to the people that work there, and they're still losing a lot of their audience because there's a, 
there's an industry that's formed around Angry Birds. When I saw um, Rovia at that time, they kind of sugared the pill of uh, their billionaireness by uh, giving me a slingshot toy, one of the first ones that they'd ever developed. Um, so that was quite good content for me. Um, so I made a ridiculous video. It was probably the worst YouTube video ever with me and my, at that time, seven-year-old ch child. And, you know, I didn't even understand the game. We got some Meccano and some plastic, and I fired the, um, the slingshot toy into the pigs to free the pigs, not knowing that you're supposed to kill the pigs, which was one of the biggest fails. And there were a lot of comments to say uh, how much I'd made that. But, I, I mean, I got 350,000 views in a, in, a, in a month. You know, it was insane. And then it went quiet for about two months. And then suddenly all the AdSense money, which is probably about, you know, 50 cents a day, suddenly went up to $15 a day. And that's because that video had gone viral in Africa, in Gabon and Gambia, knocked it up to three quarters of a million users. Um, I made about $1,000 out of it. I had a revenue share with Google and a revenue share with my eight-year-old son, because I promised him 50%, percent we will get it one day. You know what I mean? Um, but it's, it's talking to the Rovio guys and the people that have worked there, you know, they, they're, they're not at a loss because they have such an amazing, amazing company. Um, but they're losing their audience even while they're making money. Same thing with Star Wars. People do stuff around Star Wars like, that's not my bag, but, you know, people do that. James Bond, you know, that franchise, you know, they're, they're, they're losing audiences, but they're still making money. And I've had, you know, conversations with Disney and with Electronic Arts with their games that they are very much down the road of trying to add an app application, a chat application, excuse me, to everything that they do. Um, so this is where I used to live in North London. It was a, you know, amazingly sexy place, blue skies. So where do you go, I suppose, you know? So how do you keep your audience? I mean, it's pretty easy, right? You need to, you need to engage your audience. With a chat element, you can certainly do that. Um, you can, you know, a lot of the stuff, especially with mobile games, is that you have whales there that spend a huge amounts of money, you know, up to $10,000 a month by wanting to be, you know, wanting to be <coughs> the, big, the big cheese. You would reward those guys, you give them status, you give them kind of power within the network that they're working, and this is especially true with a chat platform. Uh, the status-driven element to that can't be underestimated. If you lose your whales, you lose the rest of the audience and you lose the money. And also, you know, if you've got an audience and you're engaged and you're talking, whatever status you are within that kind of chat platform, um, you're getting great interaction with humans, you're getting great ideas, um, and they're going to improve the product. You know, they're going to improve what you've got because you've basically got the best focus group in the world. This dude is playing a game, Steve Jobs, I think. You know, that's where we were. I just want to talk about a couple of companies that I think are doing interesting stuff away from the Snapchats and the lines and all the ones that we know. And this one is called Palringa. They made an acquisition yesterday. They bought a, a Swedish game company. So they started off with uh, you know, a chat platform that was pretty big in, uh, in the Middle East. It's kind of spread around the world. Um, they've now got 40 million users, you know, 40 million. And there's a good percentage of that are engaged. Um, so last year, they went to Sweden. They bought a company called uh, Freelance Design. So instead of being like Disney or electro Electronic Arts that has the content and then trying to chat, add a chat element to it, they had the chat network anyway and then used this social mobile company in Sweden to try and integrate the two. I think it's taken them a bit longer than they expected. But they now have 40 million registered users. They have 350,000 special interest groups within their platform and they also publish games. In a way, it's a a way of making instant money. If they publish a couple of games, there's a Power Ringo button that adds the chat element to it, and it's going amazing, amazingly well for these guys. They, you know, I think they've, they've got a small office in London, um, and they're one to watch, in my, in my opinion. And, and as I am aware, the users or the, <coughs> the marketing campaign that they have is pretty non-existent. These are a million registered users that are coming in every single month without too much spend. You know. You talk about unicorns, you know, you get that figure up to 100 million and, you, and you, you, know, you time it right. There's an acquirer out there that could probably use a company like Palringo. You know, Facebook can't buy everyone, right? You know, Instagram, etc. cetera. Um, so that's kind of the tip for the top, I think, from, from my opinion. 
Uh, and then there's video. Real is a, a, another London-based company. Uh, so what they've done is they've managed to get some video compression technology and managed uh, people that within the, their chat network can send 30-second videos to each other. You've seen the kind of success of um, <coughs> Periscope and Twitter and even Meerkat, that's kind of who knows who will win that one. But, you know, people like video. You know, sending a 30-second video to your mate, whether it's in Bengaluru and Bangalore or London, has got huge value. I think they're going to do uh, something quite special as well. And, I, and I've, you know, spoken to their guys recently. Facebook, as you'd imagine, and Skype are also interested. And in. um, This is just a funny thing I was going to end it with, really. That's Charlie Sheen. People call cocaine Charlie Sheen, and I thought that was quite funny. Uh, that's me. Um, I'm on, obviously, uh, Twitter. That's my blog. It's pretty good, I suppose. Gmail, LinkedIn, and obviously the aforesaid Pal Ringo. So uh, with that, I shall go. See you later. Thank you very much indeed. Appreciate it.